everybody. Welcome back to the podcast, My View on the View, where I make the views table relatable. I take the table dynamics and I try to relate those to our everyday lives. So come on in to the Morgan Ortega's seven point performance review. Plus, national security expert and State Department spokesperson for the Trump administration, Morgan Ortega's, is back to guest co host. So that was the announcer. Uh, That was Morgan's second day. And so let's talk. So listen, if you're new, check the description box. No matter where you are listening, there's general, general, excuse me, uh, information about myself. uh, There's general information about the podcast. All that stuff is there. Also, I will tell those of you who may feel a little bit lost because I'm going to be going very fast now through all of my reviews. You may feel lost and you may not really understand what I mean by these things that we're stacking the women up against. Uh, No matter where you're listening to the sound of my voice, there is a podcast. The title is very clear. I'm not going to tell you, read it all off to you, but it's very clear. And it, and it basically tells you that I'm explaining in detail what each of these mean. Okay. So if you're really, really interested, take the time when you can and go back and find that podcast. It's within the last couple of weeks and it's there. Okay. Let's dive into this. Now I do want to say there is a, I'm giving you a trigger warning, (laughs) trigger warning, trigger warning, which means If you are a highly sensitive person, if you have a lot of internal struggles that you've not worked through, okay, if you are easily triggered, okay, by certain things, this is not the podcast you want to listen to, okay? Now, don't try to be nosy and say, oh, well, I can handle it. You know, I know I'm, you know, easily, you know, offended or whatever, whatever, whatever. And so I'm just going to listen anyway, because I want to see what this woman going to say. And then you wind up getting triggered. You see what I'm saying? So I'm doing my part by letting you know that I'm going to be saying some things that could uh, actually, you know, cause cause some emotional pain for certain people that may have have dealt with some things, okay, that they've not resolved. So that that there you have it. So let's dive into it. I'm going to go through the seven point criteria list, and I'm going to tell you my thoughts on how Morgan Ortega stacked up against all seven. And then, of course, at the end, I'm going to give you my general and final thoughts. Okay. So. First of all, Morgan is 39. She is a millennial. And I will tell y'all, even though we know the view is just like, listen, we're trying our best to find the right person, but we can't look forever. You know, we got a live show. You know, we can't look, you know, uh, you know, to infinity here. We're going to have to get this thing done. And so we know that if anything's going to go by the wayside uh, in terms of the criteria or the requirements, it's going to be millennial age. That's going to go by the wayside because everyone they've chemistry tested has, excuse me, not everyone, but the majority, they have not been millennials. Okay. But I will tell you, I really get excited when I hear that there's going to be a young person testing, testing out in that seat, because the truth of the matter is guys, let's be realistic here. Okay. Anna is about to be 50 in December. Sunny's 53. Okay. Joy's 79. Whoopi's turning 66 this Friday, which I think is November the 12th or something like that, but it's going to be this Friday, the second week of November. All right. And Sarah is um, in her early forties. So the truth of the matter is all those women are from different generations and we really do need to hear from a younger person. Okay. Who can tell us what young folk are thinking, uh, thinking, how they're thinking and uh, their worldview and, and how they're really spying out the land in terms of politics and pop culture. And, you know, we've talked about this a million times, you know, trying to find a millennial who's a Republican or a conservative isn't hard. The part that's hard is one that has emotional maturity. That's the hard part. Okay. So I was really excited to see this young lady come on there, although I was very disappointed <laughs> and we'll get to that near the end. Okay. So if you missed her two days, she chemistry tested Monday, November 8th, 2021 and Tuesday, November 9th. Okay. Let's go. Number one, during these two days, did Morgan demonstrate to us that she had a generally likable personality? She did. She had a generally likable personality. I would say actually she was more than generally likable. She seemed to be a, um, she seemed to have a lovely personality, you know, someone who's kind and sweet, um, someone who um, is very uh, courteous to others. That's the way. Now, remember, we don't know any of these folks 
for real, for real. We don't know who they really are. We're just going off of whatever's presented before us these two days. So these observations are very surface level, okay? Because we we don't know them, okay? But I would just say she just seemed to be a very kind person, okay? Like she just seemed to me like someone who'd be volunteering a lot or something like that, okay? Number two, during these two days, did she have chemistry with every single woman who makes up the panel. Well, of course, Anna wasn't there. So as normal, we didn't get to see that interaction. But I will tell you guys, the answer to number two is no. There was no chemistry in my view on the view. Now you may have, you may think there that there was chemistry. Okay, remember these are my, um, you know, my thoughts here. You you may have your own and they very well may differ, differ from mine and that's fine. The only thing we try, we strive for here in our community, no matter where you're listening to me, is that we're all grown and that we're not kids and we don't name call and all of that. We learn how, if we don't know how, to disagree agreeably with people. We just go ahead and practice that even on the internet because real life is, is coming next, right? Okay, so what I saw these two days um, was that they, they definitely seemed to, um, I would say they liked her, you know, as they seemed to like her. Um, but again, when you just like people generally, that's, that's not enough guys. It's just not enough. Just like I told y'all courtesy isn't enough. So that's why Brian Teta said, we're looking for someone who has chemistry with the group. Those of you like me who are listening to the fabulous Behind the Table podcast that The View has, how many of you guys have been listening to, OMG, I love these Behind the the Table podcasts. Um, They are so revelatory. Well, the first one that they published was Joy and Meredith, okay? And I will tell you guys, and we're going to play this and talk about this on another podcast. One of the things that Joy told Meredith is that we're looking for someone who has chemistry. So listen, we we keep hearing this chemistry thing. So if it's very, very important to the view, guys, it has to be just as important to us as viewers, okay? We can't be like, well, courtesy is enough. The fact that they all were giggling and sniggling together, that's enough. No, it ain't. This is a real close-knit group. You've got to have a deeper connection because when you have chemistry, you can build off of it. You you, you will work harder to, to get along because there's that deeper connection. Okay, so let's go on. Number three, during these two days, did Morgan Ortegas do the job of the conservative? The answer is she tried. Well, the first day she didn't do nothing, okay? And we're going to talk about that at the end. And I know y'all are like, amen, sister. She didn't do nothing the first day. Um, But the second day, I will tell you, she did try. She tried to push back. She did disagree once. Okay. now I'm not going to really talk about her interaction with Adam Schiff because reporters are blowing that up. Listen, I was watching the show. It wasn't a big deal. She asked him a difficult question. Uh, that's normal for guests to be asked difficult questions. He didn't like her question or he thought, you know, like he said, the integrity of her question wasn't, uh, you know, uh, pleasing or whatever. To me, that's not a big deal. And so some of you I know who are new, maybe you don't know. So I should tell you this. I don't talk about every little itty bitty thing that happens on the show. I talk about the things that I think are important, you know, because it's my podcast. So for me, Some things, you know, that viewers think are important, they want me to talk about, but I didn't think those things were important. It's just a normal part of having a panel show. When guests come on, they do need to be asked hard questions. I mean, I didn't, I don't like when they play softball with these um, uh, politicians and stuff like that. You know, Adam Schiff, like everybody else, he needs to be taken to task. Okay. Cause he hasn't done maybe the best that he could do either. Okay. And he's, you know, I've side-eyed him a couple of times. So I didn't think that was a big deal. So when I say she pushed back and that she tried her second day, which was the day Adam Schiff was there to do the job of the conservative, I'm not talking about that interaction. This is what I'm talking about. So take a listen. So Congressman, Congressman Paul Gosser tweeted a video that's still up on the site, photoshopping himself into an anime beheading Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and then pulling two swords on President Biden. Should he expect a visit from the Secret Service? I mean... But uh, this group, this Gosar and and Marjorie Taylor Greene and Boebert and Gohmert, they all go after the cancel culture, but they don't cancel their own. 
they never cancel their own people. Mm -hmm. I mean, Lauren Boebert and Matt Gates publicly joked last week about blowing up metal detectors at the Capitol so they could freely carry weapons. Mo Brooks, another beauty. They, must, they should need a cognitive test, these people, or maybe senility. Um, he said that he'd be proud to find out that his staff helped plan the January 6th rally. Madison Cawthorn has warned that there could be bloodshed over any future elections Republicans consider to be rigged. You notice after the Virginia election when the Democrat lost, there was no discussion that it was rigged. Suddenly that is not an issue. We um, <laughs> Louis Gohmert, one of my favorite, Oy vey, he called for, <laughs> this guy called for violence in the streets after his lawsuit to overturn the 2020 election was rejected. They talk violence, they threaten people, People, and yet there they are, and yet, and yet, and yet, Al Franken had oh, to yeah. resign. That's the Democrat. We do have to remember that it was Republicans that were shot on a baseball field by a leftist activist. So it does go both ways. Well, in that uh, one uh, instance, we know you have another well, that one. Was, do you have another one? Uh, because that's yeah, one actually, against many. Maxine Waters said, we've got to get more confrontational. If you see anybody from Trump's cabinet in a restaurant, in a department store, at a gasoline station, you get out and you create a crowd. You push back on them and you tell them they're not welcome anymore. Uh, Representative Omar tweeted, it's all about the Benjamins, baby, about Israel allies and is politics. Is there violence she, in any of those words, though? I don't hear anti violence. Anti-Semitism is pretty bad, too. Which one? Oh, Anti-Semitism is pretty bad, too. Yeah. So what I'm saying is, I, I'm On not defending sides. this guy I, I, what the, at all. I, what Trump in fact, said? I think the problem I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah. Here I am again. You know, if you saw her face, when Joy, you know, pushed back against her, she looked like she was intimidated. Okay, number four. These two days, did Morgan Ortega demonstrate that she was a good conversationalist? I'm going to say yes to this. Even though those two days, they really, guys, didn't talk a lot about um, pop culture. I think they only had like one or two lighthearted topics because they had guests both days and y'all know guests take up a lot of time. Um, also they had that view your deal on Monday. So, you know, they got to give time to that to the end of the show, but she, she, I think overall was a good conversationalist. Number five, 80% of the time, uh, when the panel disagreed with Morgan, did she show that she, you know, could remain mostly professional. The answer to this is we don't know because she mostly agreed with them. You know, that one time there she was pushing back. I think another time when they were talking about Aaron Rodgers, which was the first day she, you know, mostly agreed with them. And then she was like, okay, you know, but you know, he should have a right to speak his mind. Um, and I think all of them agree with that, that yes, he should. They just didn't like what he said, but he did have a right to speak his mind. So guys, we just can't answer number five. Let's go to number six, because I definitely want to get to my final thoughts. Okay, number six. Um, did she demonstrate that she had the ability to see truth and acknowledge it? And once again, we always use the election. Um, did she, does she think the election was stolen? You see, or uh, January 6th. What are her thoughts on January 6th? And I will tell you, they didn't talk about January 6th or the election those two days. And there was nothing else that they talked about that we could really say, did she have the ability to see truth and acknowledge it? So I'm going to have to say we don't know on this one. Um, but I have a feeling they're going to bring Morgan back. I think they're going to give Morgan a second chance. And um, we'll talk about that too near the end. And then finally, uh, the seven point criteria uh, list what did she demonstrate to us guys these two days that she was generally knowledge generally excuse me knowledgeable about politics and pop culture she did although they didn't have many pop culture conversations she she definitely did okay let me give you my final thoughts on morgan first i will say her first day i i don't it seemed to me and i don't know this girl from adam or eve uh, actually, before she was on there, I didn't even remember her being the national security security advisor. You know, so many people came and went in the Trump administration. Uh, what was it? Um, Anthony Scaramucci was there for what, 11 days. I mean, so that was a revolving door We, we in my lifetime. And I, and I think my my dad would say in his lifetime, too, and my dad is in his late 70s. There's not been a White House that had that many people go in and out during the four years. And then when he was out of office, they still had, you know, people in interim positions and then some positions that were just, there was no one in them. So this was just a very crazy chaotic white house. So I didn't even remember her. Um, but I will tell you that the first day she seemed heavily medicated to me. 
And the reason I'm saying that is because, you know, I just, I just had so many flashbacks when I was watching her that day, when I used to do investigative interviews and, you know, going to someone's house and interviewing them for court cases and things of this nature. And you're going to have to testify and they're going to have to testify all this kind of stuff. People get used to get very nervous and sometimes they would take something before I got there. And so their reactions and things like that were in, in reflexes and just the way they were turn, you know, they would turn their head. Just a very, they're they're They were very, uh, they were like in slow motion, so to speak. Um, watching her on day one really reminded me of that, those experiences. Now, Don't forget, this is my view on the view. You may not think anything like that, this, and that's your business, but I'm telling you what I thought. Y'all know I don't care about agreement. (laughs) If I cared about people agreeing with me, I wouldn't be doing this because you can't be the kind of person that can give your opinion and let the chips fall where they may and care what people think about what you say. Those two things just don't go together. There's no way you can do it because you'd always be trying to please people and not say things or say things, you know, and it's just not something I'm going to be concerned about. I'm truly telling you every single time we do a review, what I thought about the person. And I'm making it clear to you that this is, this is what I thought. I thought something was wrong with her the first day she, or it could be not that she was medicated, um, that she was extremely tired. I know she did say she has a little girl. I don't know how old the little girl is. So it's it's possible that she was just up all night with her baby. You know, I I doubt that she brought her baby to New York, but I don't know if, I think this girl lives in Washington, D.C. Somebody can correct me if I have that wrong. So I do believe they flew her out. And, And also here's something too. The reason why I really ruled out the up all night with a kid thing is because these women know months in advance when they're coming on this show. And so, of course, if this is your live job interview and you're trying to get hired on the number one daytime talk show, you're going to make sure that you are super duper fresh and energized for those two days because you want to make a great impression. And it's not just the executives that you have to impress. It's the viewers because we're the ones that keep the show going. If we turn our backs on the view, they they their ratings go down. They lose advertisers. So we are a big part of who you need to make an impression on, okay? Because social media is a powerful thing. And when people, you know, we always hear the women talking about how, you know, uh, you know, they have to block people on social media. You know, social media affects their mental health when they see comments and all this. So social media is powerful. And so, you know, it would seem to me um, for something this big that I, I doubt if she was up all night with the baby. I doubt if she flew her baby with her from D.C. to New York. I like highly doubt that something was going on with her. I don't know. It to me, it seemed like she was just very medicated and maybe she's ill. See, it could have been medication because she's ill medication because she's not feeling good or it could. It may not have been medication at all. It just could be her natural personality. And uh, there are people who are really subdued in their personality. Um but generally people who are really like what she was day one, there's a little bit more going on and I hope I'm making sense. Maybe not. Maybe so. Um, so anyway, so day one, she just really sat there. She would be had to remind her to talk. And if you saw the show, you know, I'm telling the truth. Would be had to say to her, okay, jump in. Cause she was just like sitting there. And then I remember one time she was just kind of looking and I thought this lady took something. Maybe, like I said, maybe she's ill. Maybe, you know, whatever. Maybe she got sick on the plane. It could be a number of reasons if if it was medication uh, and it didn't have to be a negative reason, meaning something because she couldn't handle the pressure of what she was doing or it could have been that. But something was definitely going on with her. So I just thought I'm not sure if Morgan knows that she's trying out for a job. I mean, I'm like, okay, you got to talk, Morgan. You can't just come there. And let me just say this. This is the view. (laughs) Everybody, everybody who comes to the show knows that this is a table of highly opinionated women. And if honey, if you don't jump in, you're going to sink. You got to jump in the conversation if you're going to be heard. Um, It's great. Yes, courtesy is great. And you want to wait until people finish and things like that. But when people all all of day one, Whoopi had to keep reminding her to speak. That is not a good sign. okay? and like I said, a couple of times when I was watching Morgan, she was just sitting there like 
almost in another world. And I thought, I think, I think it just reminded me of those interviews where people had taken something before I got there. Okay. The, the next thing I want to tell you is I think someone talked to her after the first day, maybe her agent who, you know, maybe someone at the view, I don't know, and said to her, okay, you really need to speak. You, you really can't, you can't come to this table and just sit there. And, and, and what's okay. So, what's so crazy about it is she had all these blue cards which she rarely looked at. And she had a pen in her hand, which I will tell you, I can't stand when people talk with a pen, pen in their hand. That's just like a pet peeve. Um, but because it's like, okay, you know, but anyway, I won't go into my pet peeve, but I wonder, well, Morgan, what are all the blue cards for a girl? If you're not going to, I mean, I just thought what is going on? So I think someone talked to her and said, listen, tomorrow needs to be better. You need to do better tomorrow. You need to talk more. You need to look excited, Morgan. You need to you know, you know, you need to be a part of the panel. (laughs) You know, that is what you're trying to do here. And so I found that day two was better. Day two was a lot better in terms of her participation in the conversation. Whatever was going on with her the first day, let's put it that way. Let me, let me put it that way. Didn't seem to be going on with her the second day, whatever it was. I just told you what I think it is, but whatever it was, it wasn't going on with Morgan the second day. The second day was better, but still Morgan was didn't make an impression at all on me as a viewer. A lot of these women come and it's really, they don't really want the job because we can tell because they're not doing anything when they come, but they're coming for some other reason. Maybe because the money is really good. We don't know how much the view is paying these women these two days to chemistry test. Okay. But I'm assuming it's pretty good. Um, so maybe it's the money that they're coming for and the free meals and the to go to New York. I mean, who wouldn't want to go to New York for two days and get away from your baby who's still crying and your husband and, you know, get away and you can do some shopping and kind of have a a mini vacation, so to speak. And you're in a, they put them up in a plush hotel in New York. I mean, so, I mean, you know, I don't know what Morgan came to do, but it was obvious to me, she didn't come to get this job. You know, guys, let me say this. This is a competition. I want all of us to remember this. Uh, These women are competing against each other to get this job. And when a woman comes to chemistry test and she's low energy or whatever's going on, I mean, my thing would be, girl, you know, drink a bunch of green tea, (laughs) drink a bunch bunch of coffee. You need to make an impression on viewers. Hopefully they'll give her another chance to kind of show us what she can do because these two days were really, she was just a dud. She really was. She was a dud. Actually, she reminded me a lot of Abby Huntsman. Did any of you guys have that thought? Y'all remember how Abby was? And remember, Abby was such a dud that Abby hadn't been there but like two months and they had to give Abby a talent coach. Y'all remember that? We talked about that once we found out that they had to hire a talent coach for Abby. And so what we don't want a woman who has been in media, you know, most of her career And then she comes to the view and acts as if she doesn't know what to do. It's like, that's why they're not bringing on people to chemistry tests who are brand new to TV and who are brand new to broadcasting and brand new to entertainment or infotainment shows. These women, most of these women are, have been in this thing for decades or for many, many, many years. So there's no such thing as coming here and now all of a sudden you're scared, like no, or all of a sudden you're intimidated. It's like you knew where you were coming. And so you're either, you either step up to the plate Or you just go somewhere and sit down and let the women who are really out to get this chair, like Ebony said on that red carpet, this is my dream job. She said, I'm sending emails. Y'all heard her on that clip. She said, I'm sending emails to the to the staff, you know, and she didn't mean the women like she talking about. She was talking about the camera operators. I'm sending emails thanking them. I mean, Ebony knows when you're trying to get a job, you're in a competition and you got to show everybody that you are you uh, have what it takes and that you can do this thing. But when you just come there and just sit or like Gretchen Carlson, you just kind of plug your organization every time you can get. It's just like, we don't really know why, why are you there? (laughs) Because you're not giving us anything. So guys, that's all I've got for Morgan Ortegas. Uh, They're going to be chemistry testing another woman, I think in the next few uh, days coming, and we will review her performance as well. So thanks so much for tuning in. If you can, where you are listening, leave your thoughts about Morgan's uh, chemistry, two days of chemistry testing. Let us know what you thought. I'll talk to you guys later. Have a good day. Here we go, here we go again
trying hard, but you wanna be my friend. 